Okay, here's a quick video to get you started with your Universal Radio 0 0.23 installation. I'll refer to it as uh, version 2.3 going forward. Um, for anyone who has version 2.2 installed, uh, the 2.3 version does install right on top of it. This was tested successfully. For anyone who's having problems with their Universal Radio install, uninstall everything and do a clean install as per my instructions in this video. First off, please make sure you are running TeamSpeak as admin. In order to do that, you, you should have installed it as admin, but also running it as admin, simply on your TeamSpeak icon, right click, go to properties, compatibility, change the settings for all users and run this program as administrator. Don't simply just check it uh, right in the compatibility screen because sometimes um, the system may be called as a system user, which is not you. Uh, and so you, you wanna just set it for all users. Uh, once you've done that, um, let's go ahead and launch TeamSpeak and take a look at our plugins. You'll notice that in my TeamSpeak configuration, I've only got the client query plugin selected. If you've got the TeamSpeak 3 control plugin, unless you're specifically doing something with that, like writing your own programs or using something you know uses that plugin, uncheck it. Uh, you should only need, if you're only flying DCS, you should only need the client query plugin activated. For those of you who have G15s or, or any other model of uh, the Logitech keyboard, um, you can leave that checked. If you don't know what the G15 is, you don't have one, don't worry about it. So now that we've got that done, let's go ahead and close out TeamSpeak before beginning. I have downloaded the 2.3 installer as well as the NTTR relief map. If you are upgrading from version 2.2, you do not need to reinstall the relief map. Simply install the version 2.3 that you've gotten from our forum and go from there. For anyone doing a clean install, you must get the relief map from the Techno World site, the NTTR relief map. Okay, let's go ahead and start the install. I'm gonna right click, run as administrator. I agree, leave everything checked, install. Okay, now let's do the relief map. Okay, and now Universal Radio is installed. Let's go ahead and launch TeamSpeak to make sure that the plugin is checked. And you'll see in my install, the plugin is not checked. So let's go ahead and enable it. And let's close TeamSpeak and restart it. And we can now see the plugin is checked, it's healthy. And we know because we've got Universal Radio in our plugins menu. Okay, let's close TeamSpeak and launch the Universal Radio control panel. A desktop icon is probably not created for this, so make sure you look inside of your all apps directory. Once we've got the Universal Radio control panel launched, the first thing we want to do is click install. The thing to note is that this is installed to our default DCS directory. In other words, it's not in your DCS World 2 open alpha directory. We're gonna take some steps to move this to our open alpha. For now, let's go ahead and configure the rest of the panel. The first thing to note is that Radio 1 is actually your VHF FM or Fox mic radio, and Radio 3 is actually your VHF AM or Victor radio. So it's a little bit backwards from the way we think about it in the A10, but just configure it as such. Radio 2 is indeed the UHF radio. Configure your ears as desired. And change the uh, exclusive mode, make sure that is enabled. Exclusive mode prevents 
you from hearing people who are not using Universal Radio when you are in the sim with Universal Radio enabled. The next thing we want to do is select our output sound device. Now, for those of you who only use a headset for both your comms as well as your DCS sounds, in other words, you do not have separate PC speakers, this is not a concern for you. For those of you who do have separate PC speakers, you want to select your headset output for this. This way, all of Universal Radio's sound effects are now played through your headset instead of your PC speakers. For me, it's uh, the Asus Essence STX2. Okay, for now we're going to leave ourselves on default radios. We will come back in a moment to show MIG pilots how to configure the additional uh, radio frequencies. Simply apply and exit. Now that we've done that, we're going to copy over the necessary Lua and LUAC files uh, from our original DCS directory to our DCS alpha directory. On the left hand side, I've opened up my default DCS, so saved games DCS scripts directory. And you'll notice several files there. On the right hand side, I've got open my DCS open alpha directory. So here's what we need to do. The first thing we want to do is take the Techno World LUAC and copy it over from our default directory to the DCS World 2 Open Alpha directory. If you are, if this is not a clean install and you're overriding or upgrading from 2.2 to 2.3, you must copy this file over and overwrite the one that was previously there. For new installations, this will be the first time this file is copied over. The next step is to open up the export Lua. So right click, edit that with a notepad plus plus. Do not copy over the export Lua from your original install uh, to the new directory. That may work for some people, but I've noticed quite a few folks have quite a bit going on in the export Lua. So the cleanest thing you can do is open up the one in your default directory and specifically copy out the Techno World line. We then want to open up our Export Lua in the Open Alpha and paste that line. Save the Export Lua and you're done. It is important to make sure that in the Open Alpha Export Lua, you do not have Aries enabled. If there's an Aries line in this Lua, you must either comment it out or delete it altogether. This will cause you problems when launching Universal Radio if you don't remove that line. At this point, if you are a MiG-21 pilot, you must copy the 476 INI into your uh, Universal Radio Saved Games folder. So if I just go up to Saved Games, you'll notice that in the Saved Games directory there is a Universal Radio directory. I simply want to go to our download section, private, other add-ons and mods, and grab the INI from here. Once downloaded, extract the file and copy the INI to this directory. At this point, we want to launch the Universal Radio Control Panel and select the 476 INI. You will see it here in the drop down, select it, and apply. Again, this only applies to MiG 21 pilots at this time. If you do not fly the MiG 21 at the 476, that step does not apply. I will remind you that every time you make a change to the Universal Radio Control Panel, you must close and restart TeamSpeak for those changes to take effect. 
At this point, we're done. Let's jump in SIM and I'll show you what to look for in TeamSpeak to make sure your plugin is working successfully. Connected. So at this point, I am logged on to my own TeamSpeak server. Uh, on the 476 server, it's the same thing. You will notice when you click on your name that you are not connected, pilot exclusive. Uh, you will not see this when you click on other people's names. You will see that they are not connected or connected if they are, uh, but you won't see whether they are exclusive mode. Uh, so just note that. Another difference from Universal Radio and Aries is that you will never see the frequencies of the other pilots. You will only ever see your own frequencies. Um, so don't think that there is an error if for some reason you're clicking on your name and you see frequencies and you're clicking on another pilot and you just see radio one, two, three. That is correct. Let's quickly jump in SIM so we can see the behavior. So now that I am in my cockpit, notice that I am connected as far as TeamSpeak's perspective, although you see no radio frequencies because my radios aren't on. I'm going to quickly turn on the ground power. Chief, turn on the ground power. Copy. Ground power is now on. Now that my ground power is on, you can see that my radio frequencies are connected. So this I will see for myself, but again, if there is another pilot in, I will never be able to click on that pilot and see his frequencies. At this point, I have successfully installed and configured my universal radio. That concludes the video.